Well, welcome this morning to our Bible study. With all the things that are going on in the world, uh, let me just say I started this study and put it all together early in the week before uh, Hamas decided to bomb Israel yesterday, uh, a terrible, terrible act of uh, terrorism. And we're going to see Israel do something about this, I know. But today, it is so, um, the, the timing is so crazy because Last week, we talked about the Valley of Armageddon. If you missed last week, you need to go back and look at it. I set up the Valley uh, of Armageddon and the war that's going to be taking place. I also talked about a pre-war right before the uh, Great Tribulation, and we may be seeing that pre-war beginning as of today or yesterday, right now. Today, we're going to go into the second part of this. We're going to see what's going to really happen prophetically with this study on the miraculous valley of Anon. Well, good morning. We uh, want to welcome everybody watching us live today. Uh, I'm sure everybody has been watching the news. The, greatest, the uh, latest thing <clears throat> that we're hearing is about the uh, uh, war in Israel. Uh, we're praying for the nation of Israel. I pray that you are praying for the nation of Israel uh, I, I contacted uh, one of our uh, guys there that uh, works in the Galilee area, Zev, and uh, to check on him. I hadn't heard back from him today, but they're in Galilee, and I just texted him and said, Zev, I hope you guys are all right. We're praying for you and your family and your team out there. Uh, Zev runs uh, or helps run the Shabbat House. Uh, the Shabbat House works with the refugees, and they have a food bank and a, a, food, a, cl a clothes closet and everything for the people in the Tiberias area. We're praying for them. Today, <clears throat> we're going to jump right in. Well, like I said in the introduction, uh, if you didn't see last week, you need to go back and look at last week. Uh, I did a lot of verses on the Battle of Armageddon. Uh, we know that the Battle of Armageddon closes out the seven years of Great Tribulation. We know that it'll be the ending of the times of the Gentiles. And Jesus is going to return and set up his kingdom. So we got to the place right as the war was going to begin last week. Today, we're going to take it all the way to where this new valley is going to be created. And let me just tell you right now, I have a lot of verses. So you want to get your Bible out. By the way, if you'd like to follow along, I'm sure I throw that up today. Uh, if you would like to follow on, you can go to our website, CrosswalkChurchOPFlorida.com. Go to our resources tab and you can download the manual, actual manual that I'm teaching from today, you can have all those notes and verses and everything I update it every week. So uh, there's other things on there. Check those out and you're free to have access to those. So this morning, there are two things I know about the end times. Now, I know that it looks bad. I know that Hamas and all these terrorists and the Palestinian uh, Authority, whatever, they're, they're, they hate Israel. And their goal is to <clears throat> drive Israel to the sea to annihilate it. Now, one of the things we need to understand about what just happened was it is all targets back and goes back to Iran. Iran hates Israel. Iran wants to destroy Israel. Uh, the terrorist groups that are around uh, that area, Hamas uh, and others, are just a tool for them. Where else would they have gotten all these thousands of rockets to launch into Israel. But this I know. Israel is going to win the war. Amen. Not only is Israel going to win the war, Israel is going to take back all the land that it has given up. And I want you to understand, you got to be careful what you listen to and who you listen to because everybody throws a slant one way or another. Israel's terrible. They're depriving the Palestinians of this. We even have uh, people in our Congress today that are backing the terrorist Palestinians, uh, that should be a clue that <clears throat> they should be removed from serving in our country because America is Israel's ally. But I don't want to go into that today. Let me show you why Israel is going to win. Even though Israel is not saved, even though Israel does not believe that Jesus was the Messiah, they're still the apple of God's eye. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so we know that God's going to take care of them. It doesn't mean that war is not going to come to their door. It doesn't mean that a lot of them are going to die. People are going to die. Innocent people are going to die. 
What it means is we need to go back and look at what the Bible says. So if you're ready today, I hope you have your Bibles out and you're ready because I have a lot, like I said, a lot of verses. There are two things I know, but before I do that, let me go and show you a little bit right quick. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, on this chart, here's a timeline chart. So we know that uh, Jesus has uh, ascended right after Calvary. We know right now we're living in this age of time right here. We really don't know the, the limit of it. This is what they call the times of the Gentiles. Uh, the, uh, anyway, uh, and we know that there's coming a time when uh, the Lord is going to come back and he's going to rapture the church. I already gave you the rapture verses last week. He's going to come back and rapture the church. Well, right in this spot of time right here, this is the great tribulation. This is seven years of bad stuff. I, I don't know how clear it is on your monitor, but right there, that's Jesus returning. Uh, I'll give you the verses on that in just a minute. But right in here, as uh, the Lord comes back and raptures, I believe that there's going to be a war, the Ezekiel 38, 39 war, and we may be seeing that lining up today with uh, the, uh, Hamas and what the whole deal was uh, Iran wasn't liking what Saudi Arabia was doing with Israel. They were talking peace. They were talking trying to make things work out. Iran does not want that. So they had to stir the pot. So what they're trying to do is, and you can uh, mark my words as of right now. Right now, everybody's going, Israel has a right. They've been invaded. They have a right to defend themselves. But I'm telling you what, probably by this time next week, people are going to be throwing stones at Israel, saying how bad they are and how terrible they're handling this. It's just going to happen. So <clears throat> what I'm saying is this. I believe that was an effort to stir things up in the Middle East. And I believe God is allowing it because it's Bible prophecy. So let's look at this. I believe that we are going to see a war. And remember, that war is going to come. And it's going to be quick. God's going to be very decisive on it. And at that time, we know that it could be before the rapture. It could be right at the rapture. It could be after the rapture. We don't really know. But I think we're going to see part of it. But anyway, during that time, the Antichrist is going to step up. The church is gone. Somebody say amen. amen. We're going to be raptured. How many of y'all are looking for God? Well, I hope you are. By the way, you need to tune in for uh, the service after this one, our regular service. I'm going to be doing uh, another uh, message <clears throat> on the blood of Jesus. We're going to be talking about the crown of thorns and what that means to us. So it's going to be really good. You need to tune in about an hour from now. It's going to be awesome. So check it out. So this is where we're at right now. But there are two things I know. Sarah, so go ahead and bring me back to, uh, to this one right here. I know this. Number one, Jesus is going to return on a white horse with the saints and the host of heaven. Now, let me give you the verses. Once again, I'm going to give you a lot of verses. But let me read these out to you today. I can't see that one as well, so I'm going to read it off my, my notes here. In Revelation 19, look at verses 11 through 14. Make sure I'm out of the way. And I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse. Y'all need to be getting goosebumps about right now. And he that sat upon it, uh, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, in righteousness doth he judge and make war. So we know that there's going to be a huge war against Israel at the end of the seven year tribulation. We talked about this last week. All the nations are going to converge. In the Valley of Armageddon, they're going to actually come at several ways. And then the Antichrist is going to march towards Jerusalem to burn it to the ground. And he knows that Jesus is coming back. So he's girding up this war to fight the Messiah who's coming back on a white horse. I would say he doesn't have a whole lot of sense or he's just, well, anyway. How do you go against God? How do you fight God? You know, this is crazy. And he goes on, and look what it says. His uh, eyes were as a flame of fire on his head, were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Just say that, the Word of God. Boy, that's just powerful right there. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Now, here's the thing. If we're part of that army in heaven, how did we get there? 
Uh, it was the rapture. It happened before all of this. We are not going through the tribulation. We are going to be removed. We're going to come back at the end of that tribulation, and we're going to be on horses. We're going to be dressed, ready for war, and we won't even have to fight. Let me tell you what happens here as we go. The second thing I know, I know Jesus is going to come back on a white horse. We'll look at another verse on that in a minute. But here's the next thing I know. He's going to stand on the Mount of Olives. He's going to fulfill Acts, where when he left and went to heaven, he ascended, he left from the where? The Mount of Olives. He left in the clouds, and the two men said, oh, behold, this Jesus that left, he's coming back in the clouds. He's going to be on a horse this next now, but look at Zechariah. It says this in, in uh, Zechariah 14, 3 through 4. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day on the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And now look at this. Here's where we're going to get to our point today. Look at what it says. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall be removed toward the north and half of it toward the south. Now, I, I failed to mention this. Let me go back here. Let me show you this. Look at this graphic here today. I want you to look at this graphic. This is a valley that runs through the Mediterranean Ocean. It doesn't exist yet. The valley of Anon. And Anon, you're not going to find that in the Bible. It's a description. Anon means uh, quickly coming. How many of y'all know the Lord is quickly coming? Yeah. yeah. And so the valley that you see that I put in this composite doesn't exist yet, but will. Let me explain what I'm going on. This is just one view of it. If you were like standing in Jerusalem looking out, that's the Mediterranean Sea. This valley is going to run from the Mediterranean Sea all the way to the Dead Sea. And I'll get all to that in a moment. So there's going to be a new valley that's going to be created. And let me just show you this here if you can see it. Uh, this is Jerusalem right here. Uh, the valley that I made the composite of is right there. You saw the valley running into the Mediterranean Sea. And it's going to also run to the Dead Sea. Here's the Dead Sea right in here. And we know that the Dead Sea is dead. How many of y'all knew that? <laughs> Nothing lives there. It's salty. Nothing lives there. Something miraculous is going to happen in the near future. The entire landscape of Israel is going to be changed. As Jesus comes down to the Mount of Olives, it says that he's going to stand on the Mount of Olives and there's going to be an earthquake and it's going to split a valley from the Mediterranean to the Dead Sea. This is the valley, the last valley we're going to be talking about that I know of. The literal landscape is going to be changed. Now you're asking yourself, why would he do this? Well, let me give you a couple reasons. First one is this, when the Antichrist comes down from up here, this is Armageddon, he's going to come down and he's going to come down against Jerusalem. There'll be other, the kings of the east, we know this is the east here, we know that Egypt and other uh, kingdoms are going to come in from the south and they're just going to kind of converge around Jerusalem. And so they're going to cut off any escape to get out of Jerusalem. So, and there's a, uh, a earthquake fault right there is a fault zone right that runs right through there the lord's going to open that up he's going to open up a way of escape before he destroys these armies he's going to open up a way of escape for israel now why did he just come down and blow everybody off the planet and not do, why did he do all this well i'm going to give you the answer to that here as we go so um let me show you zechariah let me go back. Is that it? I think I left one out. I did. How did I do that? Let me go here. So maybe I put it at the end. No. Okay, I'm going to just read it to you. I'll let you see it. Uh, double check these. I thought I had this. In Zechariah 14.5, by the way, I have so many verses. That's why uh, you know, graphics and stuff. Uh, Zechariah 14.5 says this. And he shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal, yea, ye shall flee like as you fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. 
and the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. So Jesus is going to come back. He's going to stand on the Mount of Olives. This earthquake's going to happen. A lot of other things are going on. I'll get to in a moment. And the Jews have an opportunity to escape. Now, when they come in, they're going to, the Antichrist is going to uh, take captive a lot of the people that are in Jerusalem. And a lot of them are going to get out. So why is all this going on like this? But before I go there, let me just show you some things. Well, I'll just tell you right here. It is my right God's doing this, and there's going to be all kinds of things happening. I'll read it to you. Uh, it won't be day and it won't be night. There'll be an earthquake. There'll be smoke and fire and thunder and all these things. Why is that? So that Israel will get saved. So that they begin to understand that Jesus is the Messiah. He is their deliverer. He's the one that Isaiah talked about. He's the one that they were waiting for all this time time and uh, denied him. They're going to finally recognize Jesus Christ. Israel, the nation, is going to be saved. Everything about the Great Tribulation points to the fact that God wants Israel to accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah. And God has to punish the nations that were used to correct Israel. We know that through history in the Old Testament. God always brought in a kingdom. They brought Israel into captivity. And then God punished those kingdoms for being too harsh. Listen, the harshest one is yet to come. It's the revised Roman Empire. And it's going to come. And let me just show you uh, something else here. So the Jews if, uh, on the Mount of Olives right here, across that valley that's not there yet, there are, there's a cemetery. We, we stood there. You can stand in a cemetery, and you can look east towards Israel, you can, uh, to, the, to the Golden Gate, to the Old City, and uh, you stand in the middle of a Jewish cemetery. Now, the Jews want to be buried here because they know that when Messiah comes, listen, they know what... Je- Zechariah said they know what Ezekiel said they know that the Messiah is coming they just don't believe that Jesus was that Messiah so they want to be buried when he comes back because they know he's coming back to the Mount of Olives so this is on the uh, east side of the Kidron Valley so we know that we know that cemeteries are an important thing going on in Israel right now and we know that the Jews have their cemetery on the east of the Kidron Valley, where the Lord's going to come back. But then the Muslims did something. They put a Muslim cemetery on the other side of the Kidron Valley, and they sealed up the eastern gate because they knew the prophecy that the king, the prince, would come and he would walk through the eastern gates. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, Let me just show you those. Here's the uh, eastern gate. It's sealed up. It's been that way for almost 500 years. I'll read you a verse in a moment. And along there are cemet- is a bunch of graves. They know that the Messiah, as prophet, priest, and king, cannot walk through that graveyard because he's going to defile himself. Well, he's not going to have to because that thing's going to rip open. All these graves are going to be ripped apart. He's going to walk right, and that gate's going to open up. Let me just uh, tell you about that. Uh, the Muslim uh, Solomon uh, put this here. It's 16 feet of concrete inside this gate 16 feet now that'd be hard to get get through but they did that so they placed that there to keep uh the messiah from going through let me give you ezekiel look at this ezekiel 44 1 through 3 i hope you're writing these down because i'm fitting all the pieces uh i'm connecting dots as pastor mark Carell says to me connect dots connect dots connect the dots ezekiel 44 1 through 3 Then he brought me, now once again, this is Ezekiel, he's seen a vision of a temple, the temple yet to be built. He's seeing the gate that's there. And he says, Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh towards the east, and it was shut. So Ezekiel's seeing the future. He's seeing the eastern gate that's blocked up. And he goes on, Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut. And it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it. There it is. That's why they're trying to keep Jesus from going through that gate. How many of y'all know it doesn't matter? 
It doesn't matter if all the armies on the planet go against Israel today. It doesn't matter because God is going to save Israel. How many of y'all know that all it takes is God to send one angel and he can decimate every force there with a click of his finger? Yes. I'm going to break it down. You're going to get to see this here. So uh, this is where we're at on this Ezekiel. So you can see, uh, let me back up. I want you to, ah, okay. This thing, there we go. Look at that thing. Now, I've got pictures uh, on the other side of this. As I'm sitting on the Temple Mount, I have this structure to my back. I also have some pictures of it in my book, uh, what this looks like. It's super thick. I mean, it's like thick. And uh, he's going to break through there and walk out onto the Temple Mount. So it's pretty cool, as I believe that's going to happen. So, uh, by the way, I believe that the Dome of the Rock and the Al-Aqsa Mosque is going to be gone. It's going to be gone. I'm not going to get into the, the Temple Mount and who owns it and what's going on and who controls it. Israel basically has ownership of the Temple Mount from the, uh, from the, the, the war when uh, ah, Moshe Dayan went in with the paratroopers and they took over the Temple Mount. They've allowed the, the, uh, the uh, Muslims to control the rig- religious rights to it because they didn't want to desecrate their uh, their mosque, which I thought was pretty good. Well, that's the conflict right there. Listen, the Muslims don't want Israel just out of the way. They want to destroy Israel. They want them completely gone. But, okay, here we go. I did that one. I didn't change my slides. I didn't change my slides. Anyway, uh, God wins this war. And I want to show you uh, Revelation uh, 17, 14. I went back and redid the slides from the other day, and I forgot to update them on the thing. How many of y'all know it's the, the verses that are important? Y'all got to forgive me. I had a lot going on this week. Look at Revelation 17, 14. These will wage war against the Lamb. So here they are. Get the setup. They're in the, they're in the valley of Megiddo, the valley of Armageddon. They're coming in from all over. Jesus is on the Mount of Olives. And they're going, hey, let's go kill this guy on the horse. You know, I, I don't know what goes on in the mind or the mentality of this. But you're getting ready to go against, you're declaring war on God. It, you know, it doesn't make sense. So it says, and these will declare war against the Lamb, and the Lamb will overcome them because he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So here's the verses. I'm going to give you a bunch of verses. Follow along with me <clears throat> and hang on because it's going to describe everything that is going to happen at the end of the tribulation. And here it is. In Revelation 19, 15 through 21. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. It's the word. The word of God is the sword. It's two-edged. And he treadeth down the winepress of the fierceness, fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. He hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. In other words, there's going to be a great slaughter in the valley of Armageddon. So God's going to call the fowls to come and help clean up that slaughter. It's going to be a terrible thing. But then it says this. And I saw the beast. I need to watch my slides because it changed. Am I, am I there yet? I am. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken. And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which he deceived them that he received the mark of the beast. 
and them that worshipped his image. Both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and a remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. All Jesus is going to have to do is just speak, and it's going to destroy all the armies that have risen against him. Let's look at Zechariah here. Zechariah 14, 12 through 15. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. I want to see a movie made about this. I want to see the special effects. Watch what it says. It says this. Uh, and, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. God is going to just... And they are going to literally melt while they're alive. Y'all saw Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? (laughs) Y'all see Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah. Remember when the dudes were melting and exploding? That is what's going to happen. The armies aren't going to have to do anything. When Jesus speaks the word... The whole thing's going to be over. Let me finish out this verse here. And it goes on, it says, And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall, they shall lay hold of one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah shall also fight at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the heathens round about shall be gathered together. Are you changing that for me? Gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. And so shall he be, and so shall be the plague of the horse of the mule, the camel, and the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as these, as this plague. So <laughs> it's kind of a ridiculous war, but all the nations think they're going to beat Israel. Listen, when you hate something so much, you do stupid stuff. I'm going to say that again. When you hate something so much, you begin to do stupid stuff. And I believe that what happened yesterday was done in so much hate. Iran hates Israel so much. I believe they really messed up. They don't really know what they did. They actually, and I had some things I could have brought here, their charter, the Palestinian charter. And it says that their goal is to not just beat Israel, but to push them in the sea. They want to annihilate the nation of Israel. So what they did, they used this small group of terrorists in Gaza to poke the beast so that they could get the sympathy of the other Arab nations around them. Listen, Saudi Arabia was about to go into talks with Israel, and Iran could not have it. Where do you think they got all the missiles to do what they did? Yeah, they're coming in from Egypt. They're coming in from Russia. They're coming in from basically Iran. So we're seeing the start of something that we need to understand is the day of the Lord. It's all coming together. Now, if you're a believer, we should be excited. Y'all don't sound excited. Listen, the Lord is getting ready to come back. As this thing escalates, we can start looking up even more. Somebody say amen. Because this is all predicted in the Word of God. We're seeing Jesus is about to return. So let me just say this, right? I'm going to interject this because it's not my notes. If you don't know Jesus, you better find him. Because this war is against those that don't know him. And the tribulation instigates their and throws accelerant on the fire of their hate. They're literally cursing God at this point. They're literally hating God. And I want you to understand to become a Christian in the Great Tribulation is going to be near impossible. And you need to understand today, today is the day of salvation. Somebody say amen. And for everybody playing church, we'll be talking about this in my next uh, message coming up. If you're playing church today, you need to get your act together. Because the Bible is very clear in the book of Revelation about those that are cold and those that are lukewarm, rather. And so we need to understand that uh, it's now's the day of salvation. This is, God is giving us 
a moment of a reprieve of salvation. Right now in America, it's easy. There's a church on every corner, but I believe that may change. There may be churches on every corner, but not every church is going to be serving God. I won't get into that teaching, but it is a big teaching. So what is the significance of the valley of Anon? Once again, Anon is not the name of this valley. It just means it's coming soon, just like the Lord. Let me give you Zechariah 14.8. It says this, And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear. It's describing what's happening. So there's an earthquake. There's a valley being ripped open. And it goes on, it says, Shall come to pass uh, that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day, not night. But it shall come to pass at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in day that the living water, look at this, the living waters shall go out from Jerusalem half uh, toward the former sea, the Mediterranean, and half towards the hinder sea, in the summer and the winter it shall be. So not only is the Lord going to rip a valley, He's going to have living waters begin to flow out of the temple mount. They're going to flow out of the throne of God. What is He doing? He's healing the land. He's bringing life. Watch what happens here. This is so good. So water's going to flow to these valleys. And uh, let me get this. a long verse. Uh, let me show you some some uh, pictures right quick. Can you put back on the chart? That way I, I'm kind of like, there we go. Got our other camera set up. Now here's Jerusalem. Here is the Mediterranean. Gaza is down right in here. This is the Dead Sea. Nothing lives in the Dead Sea. It's too salty. It says that he's going to come. He's going to stand on this mount. Armageddon is up in here. We know that they're going to come in. They're going to try to attack, and they're going to all die. There's going to be a valley. <laughs> it's ripped both ways. It's going to go this way and this way. By the way, Jerusalem is up. It's on a mount. And in fact, when you read in Psalms, it says, I'm going to go up to Zion, the city of my God. I'm going to go up. Everything goes up to Jerusalem. I, I, I think it's like 6,000. I forget. It's high. But these listen, when you go from here to here, it's a huge drop. And those of you that have been to Israel know what I'm talking about. So let me read you what Ezekiel says about this time. Now watch close. Thank you for helping me, Sarah. I'm reading here. Uh, look at Ezekiel 47, 8 through 12. I know I'm giving you tons. Uh, I even confused myself a minute ago about my charts. A lot of verses, but you need these verses. You may want to go back and watch them over and over. Or just go download the manual and you'll have them. Ezekiel 47, 8 through 12 says this. Then he said, then said he unto me, These waters issue out towards the east country, and they go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. It's talking about the Dead Sea. It's not going to be dead anymore. It's going to go on. And it shall come to pass that every living thing that liveth, which moveth, whether so the river shall come, shall live. Everywhere this river goes, it's going to bring life. Everywhere. It's the living waters, the literal living waters. And there shall be a, vague, a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed. And everything shall live, whether the river cometh. And it shall come to pass, this is talking about uh, in the millennium, that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engedi, even unto uh, uh, E. Negling. They shall be a place to spread forth their nets. Their fish shall be uh, according to their kind, as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. But the miry places thereof and the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. By the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all the trees for meat, whose leaves uh, shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to its month, because the waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. So we know during the, the millennium reign, the thousand years, Jesus is going to set up his throne in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. We know that there will be living waters that will be flowing from the altar and it will bring light. It will be bringing life 
both to the west and to the east. The valley brings life. Come on, somebody say amen. The valley is not only going to bring life, but it's going to bring a way out for the Jews. It's going to bring them to the place of repentance. So one more big verse found in Zechariah. It's two parts. So Sarah, watch me here. Look at Zechariah 14, 9 through 17. And the Lord shall be king. Everybody say amen. amen. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. You're not going to have a whole bunch of men or women running any nation or country on the planet sovereignly. It's going to be Jesus. He is going to be king. But watch what it says about all the nations. And the land shall be turned as plain from Geba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem. And it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate under the place of the first gate, under the corner gate, and from the tower of Haniel under the king's winepress. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. It will never fall again. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, to keep the feast of tabernacles. Now, all the feasts are done away with. Jesus is going to fulfill them. But they're going to come to Jerusalem to worship God during this feast time. And it shall be that whosoever shall not come up of all the families of the earth into Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Jesus is going to control the climate. So United States, United States, United States, <laughs> if you're still there, if you're still there, if you don't come and worship me, you're going to get no rain. You're not going to have a harvest. All the nations will be affected by this. So here we go. As I close out the valley portion, we're going to jump into the desert places next week. But here it is. The valley of Armageddon is the valley of decision. We talked about that a minute ago. You need to make a decision for Christ. Right now is a great, thank you, Sarah. Right now is a great time because we're beginning to see things happen. Uh, we're beginning to see the signs. And you know what? If you connect the dots, you're going to begin to understand that now is the time of salvation. Today, more than ever, you need to get serious with God. The next thing about the, the valley is, is this valley of Anon, I call it, is a valley of life and worship. It's the valley that leads to God, to the rivers of living water that he promised the Samaritan woman. Out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. What about the Holy Spirit, man? He wants the Spirit to live and thrive in us. And he wants us to understand this, this is our life. This is what's going to happen. Because listen, God gives us, oh, I'm feeling, I'm getting chills. God gives us the Holy Spirit to heal us so that we will be fruitful like the waters that are flowing. It says they became fruitful. Trees began to grow on either side. It began to have fish and began to produce a, 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 a livelihood for people. It brought life. We are to bring life. What does the Bible call us? Y'all remember? Do you remember? We are the... Yeah, we are. The temple. And temples light up. That's good. Thank you, Savy. We are the light of the world. We are the temple. What, what does the temple do? It holds the presence of God. And listen, church believers, you need to shine more. I like it. Sabi was right. We need to be shining in our light because right now darkness is beginning to rise up and God has planned this. He's allowing this. We are in the last days. I pray this, this bless you and I pray that you could uh, share this with somebody else. Share this. Uh, had some people watch some of the other valleys and they went, I got to go back and watch it again. It was too much. My mind couldn't wrap around it. Gave a lot of information, a lot of uh, verses today. But listen, it's the word of God. That builds our faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the, the, word the Word of God. 
Well, I pray you join us next week. There's no telling what's going to be going on. I may be bringing in some current events as we look at uh, what's happening in the world and what, what's happening in Israel. Uh, but we, we know it's the beginning of what God is going to do so that Israel <clears throat> will become saved. Amen. Well, God bless you. I pray you join us again next week. Amen. Have a great week.